G'day everyone, Michael here from Gone Grey. Uh, we've got another video for you today, and today's video is uh, five reasons or six reasons to not adopt a greyhound. As you can see, we have early here with us to go through those reasons. Now, being a greyhound owner myself, uh, it's quite difficult to come up with uh, five or six reasons as to why you would not want a greyhound, because uh, we love having our greyhound. Uh, but they may not be for everyone, uh, and they may not be, might not be the right time as well if you are thinking about adopting a greyhound. So take what I say um, and consider whether or not these are going to be things that are deal breakers for you when it comes to owning a dog. Who knows? Maybe another dog breed might be more suitable for you. So reason number one, they are a large dog. Although greyhounds don't require a large amount of space, to live in, so they are known to be pretty good in apartments and townhouses and units and that kind of thing. Um, just know that they obviously are very large, so they take up quite a bit of space. Um, and I can imagine living in, a, in a, an apartment, they take up quite a bit of space. So that means maybe moving furniture around to accommodate for having a greyhound. We live in a house here, um, and early still takes up a fair bit of room. Um, Compared to a small dog, a large dog has a different set of challenges. They can come um, across as intimidating to people who don't know the breed or aren't very good with dogs. Greyhounds are very muscular. Um, you know, sometimes you might see them with a muzzle on, so they can look pretty intimidating. There have been times where people oh, might be walking past, early is very controlled on the lead, uh, and they'll still pick up their dogs, whether or not it's because they don't trust their dog or they don't trust early, it's hard to say. But greyhounds do have that reputation of being a large dog that catches rap like rabbits and those kinds of things. So if you don't like people um, judging your dog by appearance, you're going to get a little bit of that just due to the sheer size of greyhounds. Early he is around 35, 36 kilos. Uh, He's quite tall as well. He'd probably be taller than most most other greyhounds uh, and most other dogs. So he's very big. And as I said, that can be intimidating to people. Um, they can easily knock over small children. So if you have little kids running around the house, they won't mean to knock them over. But as I said, he's quite big. Greyhounds are fast. They get excited. They can easily knock a small child over. Uh, with with no no issue, so you've got to be careful there. Um, if you have not had the experience or you don't have the strength um, when it comes to owning a large dog, walking them on a lead early is quite gentle. A lot of greyhounds are gentle, but if you get a greyhound that's a bit stronger on the lead and they see something that uh, gets their attention, they are very very strong. So you need to be able to control them, uh, not only to protect yourself and others, but to protect um, your greyhound as well. Last point when it comes to the size, uh, it's quite difficult transporting them around, particularly if you don't have a large car. Uh, myself and my girlfriend, we both have um, hatchbacks, five seaters. Early takes up the whole back seat when I have to drive him to the vet or we take him somewhere. So um, keep that in mind. If you want a dog that you can easily travel around, that's not going to take up a lot of space a greyhound might not be for you. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is if you want to have a nice backyard. So um, unless you have a large area where you can kind of section them off, fortunately, we kind of do have a little section here uh, that was that came with the house. So if we need to, we can um, put early away in a small little run kind of area um, and block off his access to the rest of the backyard. However, if you don't have that and, you know, your greyhound's um, going to be outside while you're at work or, um, you know, even if you're jumping out for a couple of hours and you want your greyhound outside, uh, just know uh, it's probably not likely that you're going to have a really nice grass or lawn with a greyhound. Um, they do like to do um, what we call zoomies or run around really, really quick. Um, when you watch them run, they put their paws right in, their claws dig in, and they push off. So you're going to get um, pretty much like we have him here. You can see where, the, where he runs, the exact track of where he's running on the grass. So if you really like your lawn, maybe don't get a greyhound or even a dog 
um, potentially. Um, Greyhounds do also like to dig a little bit. Early has dug before. So just know that, um, you know, although they don't need a lot of exercise, they do like to do a quick little run around, especially in winter. It's going to cut your grass up. So, and that's probably with most dogs as well. But just so that you're aware, um, yeah, don't expect to have a really nice lawn. Reason number three, they are prone to separation anxiety. Now, this is going to depend on the individual dog. Um, you know, early doesn't have an issue with it, but uh, greyhounds do have more of a disposition to it. Reason is, is because they've been with others their whole life. They've always been with other dogs, um, whether that's a partner in their runs um, or having people around. Uh, and so when a greyhounds are adopted for the first time in their life, that's going to be the first time that they're potentially on their own with no other dogs, no people around at certain times of the day. Now, separation anxiety, for those of you who don't know and aren't aware, uh, it's basically a condition where um, yeah, the dogs obviously get anxious when no one is around and that can manifest itself in a number of ways. They can urinate or defecate um, anywhere because they're quite nervous. They might dig, they might howl, they might bark, they might chew. So um, generally they are destructive behaviours either because they're bored or um, don't know what to do with themselves. So if you're not willing or prepared to put in the work, if that is the case, then a greyhound might not be for you or a dog at all for that matter. Um, basically, you just need to make sure that your life is gonna fit in with a greyhound. So you, you can't you can't never be home at all. There are gonna be times that you need to be home. Um, yeah, you, can, you can't just leave them on their own for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on end. So the longest that we would leave early on his own is a full work day of around eight hours. He's pretty good with it. For some greyhounds, that might not be the best. We are quite lucky in the sense that my job, sometimes I work in the evening, so it means that he is with me during the day and my girlfriend might be at home for the short time that I'm away at night. So that's reason number three, separation anxiety. Reason number four, they are very sensitive dogs. So if you want a dog that you can rough tumble wrestle with, a greyhound is probably not for you. Early is very, very gentle. Um, and a lot of, a lot of greyhounds are very, very gentle. Uh, sort of dog. So they'll make a big deal out of if you step on his foot, whereas I've had other dogs that could not give a single stuff about me stepping on their foot and they'll let you know about it. They will make noise and um, whimper if you do step on their foot and you'll have to rub it all better. Um, you know, another example of, of a greyhound being quite sensitive is um, one time he was running, his nail kind of came a bit loose. Obviously, it's not the nicest thing. Um, but it didn't need any like any real intervention. I went to the vet with him and they literally just like pulled off with some tweezers, but he's very, very sensitive. So um, yeah, if you want a dog that you can sort of rough and tumble with or dogs that, you know, don't get particularly unsettled um, easily, like, you know, it, they love their routine, any little thing throwing out of the routine, they can be a bit unsure of. So um, if you want a very resilient sort of dog breed that can be quite adaptable to change. A greyhound might not be the best because they take a while to settle and get into a routine of things. So um, yeah, you might need a different type of dog. Uh, reason number five, if you want a running partner. So sometimes people think greyhounds are super active dogs. As you can see, um, they're not. Um, they do like to have a little run around the backyard for five, 10 minutes, but Literally, that's it. And then in terms of walking, like you could probably honestly get away with a half an hour walk a day at the minimum or a couple of 15 to 20 minute walks um, at the start and at the end of the day. Uh, they they can't go for long distances or even if they could, they are, reti they are retired race dogs, a lot of them. So the reasons that they retire are A, that they don't want to run, or B, their bodies are starting to potentially break down or they're getting old. Early's getting older, so that, you know, if we start to try, if I try to take him for a run, um, he probably, he'd probably be not too bad, but really, like, he 
especially in the heat, he's done after 20 minutes. He slows down quite a bit. So um, if you want a dog that you can train running with, don't get a Greyhound. Um, you're better off getting another breed of dog. Our final reason, reason number six, is that Greyhounds are very unique. So this kind of encompasses all the reasons that we were discussing before. Uh, but, you know, they've got a lack of lack of body fat, so their skin is really thin. Again, very sensitive. So um, it means that they're not very good with extreme temperatures, um, like it's super cold or super hot. So you can't really just leave them um, to their own devices a lot of the time. Um, they, they tend to be um, with that sensitive skin. You might be taking a few more trips to the vet than you would with other dogs. As I said, I've probably taken early, I've had him for about a year, I've taken him to the vet more than I would have taken any of my other dogs in that period of time. Just because he's, he's had a couple of things with his skin getting like uh, potential, like a little spider bite or um, nails getting caught on um, the decking when he's running around. Um, just little things like that. His teeth aren't in the best condition, so you're going to have to get them, um, you know, a, a dental done uh, potentially at some point in their life with you. Um, luckily enough, he'd already had a dental when, we'd sent, when we adopted him, but, you know, uh, greyhounds uh, generally tend to suffer from uh, gingivitis and, uh, yeah, decaying teeth. So you need to be careful with that kind of thing. So things like making sure that their diet is correct. They need special, not necessarily special food, but they need high quality dog food. You can't just give them um, the standard sort of dog food. It's not good for their coat. It's not good for their um, metabolism. They've got a very high metabolism, so they need high calorie dense food compared to other dogs. They don't put on weight very easily. Um, so basically they can be a little bit more expensive, maybe is, maybe is the term that we're looking for, than your general sort of, um, you know, other dog breed that isn't a greyhound. So um, those are six reasons. Let me know what you think in the comments below if I've missed anything. But with that all being said, I'd still get a greyhound every day of the week. Uh, as you can see, Early is very happy to just hang out. Um, with me. So yeah, if you guys have any questions or any video ideas, let us know and we'll see you in the next video.